Okay, so uh, Dave Brend, one of the visitor teams at the uh, Whitworth. Um, I was talking uh, to John, one of the other members of the team, uh, a couple of days ago about how the look of this exhibition uh, with the Somme as a sort of core part of it for 1916, so exactly 100 years ago, um, how most of the paintings in this exhibition look very grim, very dark, very brown, very ochre, um, to do with almost uh, quite a number of the images with blasted forests and, and, and trees and stumps of trees. Uh, and Paul Nash in particular, who was um, very interested in trees and landscape before he went and uh, signed up and became part of the First World War and part of the incredible legacy of painting and images that comes out from that horrible, horrible and very destructive time. So it was curious, talking with John, that we looked at this painting by Henry Lamb and thought how green and lush this particular painting looks. And it's, it was curious too that um, this was not really to do with the Somme as such and the exhibition Visions of War um, becomes very clear that it's also about visions of war, so it's not just exactly about the song. And he's painted this one when he did uh, some of his army time uh, in Greece on this uh, Struma River, uh, northern Greece. And there was a, a front line being held there uh, against Macedonia and some of the Turkish areas. And this is uh, so green that it, we, we just found it very curious what was the time of the year and the fact that we've been looking at so many images with blasted trees, blasted forests. And interestingly, on this particular painting, um, just to the left at the top, there's just one branch that's been broken. And it's almost like it's the start of troubles in this particular area, which for some time was quite quiet. Um, Henry Lamb was a uh, great heritage here in Manchester was uh, born in Adelaide in uh, Australia, but he uh, came over with his father when his father got a job at Manchester University uh, teaching mathematics. And Henry Lamb uh, was a uh, Manchester Grammar School uh, pupil and then went on to the medical school at the University of Manchester, but he actually didn't complete. He actually wanted to, uh, well, he was very interested in art and he decided that he would actually work in uh, art. So he got taught in Chelsea and went over to Paris. But at the time of the First World War, he comes back, uh, essentially to the UK, back to Manchester, and enlists as a, an ordinary medical orderly. Um, but as he's out there on the early years, we're talking about 1916, he comes back to Guy's Hospital and completes his medical um, training, and then is a, then a medical officer for a, a battalion of inner skilling uh, soldiers and his, is then posted across Europe. Curiously, um, this was painted uh, about a year, year and a half after the armistice and it's interesting that Henry Lamb unfortunately was gassed um, on the front in France just before the armistice, just before the 11th of November and it took him 12 months plus to recover from that horrible gassing, which was such, such a horrible time, that uh, it was a year, year and a half later that he, he really completes this painting uh, as an official war artist. And he indeed goes on to become uh, an official war artist uh, of the Second World War as, too, as, as well. Um, on this one, we're not seeing casualties that are necessarily hurt by artillery or shrapnel or by bullets but by malaria because of the area that uh, this particular part of the war was being conducted. So these people are, are, are suffering from malaria. And also the grouping of the painting, some have uh, allied it to like a pieta, like a grouping of a pieta. Um, but it is interesting too that he's caught this early morning where they've all got their collars up. It's a really cold morning. And there are two chaps looking in exactly the same direction. And there's one sort of centre and one just further off to the, to the left. And you just think they've heard something coming in. It's almost caught in the morning. 
before action starts. And the other chaps are just having their tea. They're just waking up, in a sense. And what's the day going to have for them? And also the painting of the trees and the grasses. We were looking at curiously too. Very heavily underpainted tree to the right. And to the left and to the foreground at the right, there are kind of grasses that have been painted on top of unprimed canvas. So there's quite a number of different techniques going on with the painting. And we love looking at the footprints in this rather damp sand mud at the bottom. Um, there's so many things going on with this painting. But what struck us was it looks so great.